Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, everyone. Man, we're so pumped to have you guys here with us for another episode of Doing Life with Ken and, and Tabitha. Tabitha. Sweetheart, you feeling good today? You ready to rock this? Feeling great today. Rock this funky rock this joint. Funky joint. <laughs> so we've been married for 23 years. It's been the best 21 years of our lives. Um, the first two years was horrible. You got yourself um, better. You're, you're doing better. Um, not perfect. What? But, but better. What? Um, no, you're so wonderful, so kind, so all of that good stuff. And um, love doing this show with you guys. For those of you all who are new to our show, um, welcome. I mean, hit the subscribe button. If you're new here, you can be the first to get the content as it's released. We release a new episode every Thursday at 3 p.m., and we just love to hear your feedback. But before I get there, I wanted to take a moment just to invite our audience out to a live conference. Ooh. And so every year in October, the second week in October, we have a special conference that we call a live conference. Mm -hmm. And this is what we say, that these three days could change the next 30 years of your life. Our goal is to try to give people at least four times mm. the amount that they invested in a ticket. We're going to have seven main sessions this year, six master classes, three after parties, but one encounter with God. Mm. And I believe that one encounter with God is what it's all about. It's so good. AC 23. Mm -hmm. You know, there are certain things that we do every year, like as believers, like mm -hmm. um, I fast, I, I do like major fasts a couple times a year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes there's certain books of the Bible I'll study, you know, there's a word of the year, but then something else that we do every year. And that is a conference. Yeah. AC 23 is that conference. Yeah. It's that encounter, like you're saying, mm -hmm. where you just like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all day, every day, you are like, enveloped in the presence of God, just daring to go beyond your own personal boundaries. It is amazing. And we're going to be doing a special session on marriage there. It's mm -hmm. going to be Ken and Tabitha unfiltered. Ooh. And so you really, what is that like? Well, uh, you got to come. We're already unfiltered. If, if you're interested with getting more information about our conference, check out the website, mylifechurch.org. And um, you can also check it out in the show notes. I think there's a link to that as well. You got to get your tickets now because it is going to be a sold out event. Um, today's um, show is called Relationship Pain. And we really want to just dive in mm -hmm. to really help people know how to deal with the people that are in the life, in their life, the persecution that they are receiving, the misunderstanding that's there, and to really help people overcome problems in relationships. Mm. Anything sticks out to you there? Wow. I mean, I'm just, you know, when I think of relationships, I think about um, a lot of people who are believers uh -huh. and um, the relationships that they have with people who are unbelievers uh -huh. or people who believe in Jesus, but don't completely believe the Bible or, you know, whatever. Uh -huh. um, I just remember when we were first getting into the Bible and learning the things of God, we lost a lot of relationships. Yeah. I personally lost a lot of relationships because of what I believed. Uh -huh. And it can be lonely. Mm -hmm. um, it can be hard. Well, I felt like I lost more relationships than you. Really? I don't really remember you losing relationships, maybe relationship adjustments. You, you felt like you lost relationships? Well, yeah, I, I can hear. Uh, yeah, um, I lost a few. Okay. Um, but those relationships probably, you know, didn't matter anyway. Right. Um, but yeah, adjustments, I think, is good. Right. You know, so like when, when I first got saved, uh -huh. um, I was in college. Um, I was like in a sorority uh -huh. and I love my, you know, so the sorority and, you know, all of that stuff. But uh, we were participating in a lifestyle that like, when I got saved, uh -huh. I didn't want to do it anymore. Right. And um, I lost some you just had, relationships. And I remember that because you just had something change in you. I, and it, it was wasn't like change. the Bible said this or somebody said you shouldn't do this. Mm -hmm. You just had your own spiritual convictions like, yeah. hey, I don't want to do this any longer. Yeah. I'm not comfortable. And I love your salvation story because there are people that they get saved and they say the prayer of salvation, but nothing really changes. Mm -hmm. That hasn't been for you. You got saved. Oh my God. How many years has it been now? I was 23 when I got saved. And now you're 47. So mm -hmm. 24 years. Mm -hmm. Is that, is that math right? And I've never seen you backslide. I've only seen you go forward in God. And I've seen such an authentic relationship that you have mm -hmm. with with Jesus and just always growing in his word. And mm -hmm. so thank you for doing that. Thank you for not giving in to the persecution, the lack of understanding and just being mm -hmm. bold in your faith. Amen. And so our goal today is very simple to help you take an inventory of the people that are in your life and mm -hmm. to make sure that they're in the right seats. Because I feel like many times there are people that are in the inner court of our lives that probably should be in the outer courts. Yeah. 
And then there are people that are in the outer court, maybe that you don't even know yet, that you need to make some intentional investments in the right relationships to bring them closer to the inner court. And so why do you think that's important? I think... You know, the people that you rub elbows with, these are the people that um, are influence, influencing your life. Mm -hmm. um, you pick up mannerisms and habits, whether good or bad. You pick up spirits, too. From the, <laughs> spirits, from the people that you hang around, mm -hmm. who you hang around on your job. If you're hanging around the group of people who's maybe a little clicky and the ones who always complain, you're going to pick up some things. Mm. If you're hanging around the group of people who, okay, they come in early, they leave late, yes, right. they're you know, doing everything they need to do to be successful, you're probably going to be a part of the successful group. Yeah. So I think it's just so important that we are very wise about who yeah. we hang around. Yeah. My pastor used to always say it this way, hang with those who have your answers mm -hmm. and get away from those who have your problems. That's good. And we understand from an evangelistic point, um, it doesn't cross over the exact same way. Mm -hmm. Of course, we're going to um, spend time with those who don't know Jesus yet yes. so that we can win them. That's not what we're talking about. Yes. I'm talking about the people that you decide to make a part of your life, that mm -hmm. you're doing life with, that you're exchanging ideologies, you're exchanging tons of time with. Mm -hmm. Hang with those who have your answers. And I would even say um, the people that you listen to. Right. Because some people that we listen to on podcasts, that we listen to on TV, right. sometimes we spend so much um, time <laughs> with like um, the the shows about housewives and the reality TV shows uh -huh. that their, uh -huh. their behaviors uh -huh. begin to influence us, yeah. you know, and yeah. we start to say the things that we hear them say, wow. and we have to be very careful about whose voice we listen to. Yeah. You know, and not only whose voice we listen to, you know, the, the scripture says, you'll know a tree by its fruit. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are many people on podcast or many people who have a platform that we follow, that we listen to them, but we don't know who they really are. Yeah. And I understand, you know, we got a podcast. I understand that we're sharing principles. Yeah. But I would rather be a person of character and integrity off this microphone right. and have fruit in my life right. other than be a person that's just sharing <laughs> principles. And I think that there's... There, I think that sometimes we're attracted to charisma over character. Uh -huh. And we're... And everything that glitters not is not Ooh. gold. And it's almost like... We are listening and following people, but they don't have the fruit that they should have in their life. Mm. And it's going to be hard for us to have the fruit in our life unless we follow other people who got fruit Yikes. in theirs. But anyway, so here's some things that we've learned over 20 years. Number okay. one, if you show me your friends, I can prophesy your future. Mm. Um, I've heard it said this way, that if you show me the sum of the five closest people that you mm. spend the most time with, I can show you where you are. Mm -hmm. You are the sum of the of the average <laughs> of the five Listen, closest people that you spend time that with. That is a homework project for mm -hmm. somebody. Okay. You know, like literally uh -huh. write down the five closest people in your life and look at their fruit. Right. What do they have going on in their lives? Right. And then kind of draw some conclusions and there. Do you want to be like that? We're not talking about your kids. We're talking about your friend group. Yeah, the people who influence you. The people yeah. who speak into your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. The people who, if you had a problem, you would share it with them. And so if I did that homework and I found out, you know what? These five jokers are, are a mess. One done been They through. always come to me for everything. I never even have to go to them because they always have their own problems. What would you say do if I look at my five and... Um, it's messy. Your world is too small. You got to expand your world. You have to make intentional investments to up the average. Yes, <laughs> yes. And get with people who um, have a bigger mindset and um, are closer to the Lord, mm -hmm. who walk in the fruit of the Spirit and mm -hmm. the power of God. And uh, we can do that. All right. You need those um, Barnabas, Paul, and Timothy relationships. Uh -huh. Someone who is going to pull you up mm -hmm. at the same time. Somebody who can you can pull up, mm -hmm. so that you're always you know pouring into somebody, and then somebody's always pouring into you. Yeah. Um, I think that's healthy. Yeah. How about this one? Number two. This is what we've learned over 20 years: is that every person in your life either adds, subtracts, multiplies, or divides. Mm. Okay. And so the key to having great relationships is to um, minimize the people that divide and subtract and to maximize the people who multiply and add. Uh, can you talk about that at all? I just feel like there's a whole bunch of people who just need to go cutting 
all the people. Because I just saw another homework assignment. Okay, okay, write down all the people who add, subtract, multiply, or right. divide. Right. If they if they um, subtract right. and divide, just go ahead and take them off the list. Right. How do you do that? We talk about loving people from a distance. Go yeah. ahead. I, I asked you a question, and then I answered it. Okay, you want to answer? <laughs> but I, I just wanted to say that, because uh-huh. I've had to do that in my life in areas of people that I love dearly, yeah. but they divide and they subtract from me yeah. and do not give me life. Right. And so I have, I've had to separate myself mm-hmm. and love them from a distance. I think what we're talking about today is something that's so common in the Christian walk, mm-hmm. because the scripture says that we are to turn the other cheek, we are to love the unlovely, yes. we are to overcome evil with good, and we almost get into a place where we allow too many toxic people in out of the sake of those scriptures, yes. not understanding that every scripture has to be applied with prudence, and it also has to be applied with wisdom and mm-hmm. discernment. And so, um, yeah, there's pain in that, mm-hmm. you know, but it's so important because you just can't, there are people that you have to love from a distance. Yes, There are people like, I love you, but I don't trust you. I love you, but you're not healthy for me. I love you, but I can't I can't deal with you. So I'm going to love you, meaning that I'm there for you if you need me. I'm going to pray for you and cover you. And if you ever come to the place where you're like, you know what, I need your help. I want to grow. I'm going to be there for you. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm okay with us being in different locales. Yes. I'm okay with the distance, you know. And I think there's many people that might not be okay with that. Mm, yeah, that's just something that you have to deal with, really. I mean... Here's what I do as well. I mean, when you talk about people that are in your life that, you know, do they add or subtract? Um, And then as believers, we have people who we always want to pour into, right? Uh Um, I found that the people that are in my life that should be in my life and that I can pour into, like I have a grace for them. Right. I can handle it. So they can go and cut up and act a fool, but I'll still be able to speak into their lives Mm -hmm. and it's not going to bother me. I'm going to still be able to go to sleep at night because I have a supply for them. But the people who go cut up and act a fool, Mm -hmm. but I can't sleep at night Mm -hmm. and all day I'm thinking about them Mm -hmm. and it hurts me. It hurts my feelings. It puts me in a box. It's like I can feel the persecution. Those are the ones Mm -hmm. I need to separate myself from. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, today is really uh, the, the, the goal of this segment is not, hey, go cut off everybody who, you know, all your friends and family members. Or is it? I think that's the goal of today. It's to really look around because there are some people who are listening and watching that they have allowed way too many influences yes. in their soul and in mm-hmm. their inner circle to where they are being hindered from being who God's mm-hmm. called them to be. And they um, are so, they are more committed to people approval than God approval. Mm -hmm. We want to help get you free. Mm -hmm. But then there are some lone rangers that it's like, you know what, they ghost you real quick. They they cut you off and they probably need a little bit more compassion. They need a little bit more patience. They need a a little bit more tender mercies, Mm -hmm. so forth and so on. Um, but I think the second thing that we've learned is to kind of categorize people, you yeah. know. And so when someone, when I know someone subtracts from me or divides me, it doesn't mean that I never will talk to them again. Right. It means that I'm going to God, asking God, okay, God, how do I deal with this person? How do I create a healthy separation and healthy distance, but still love them, but not let them uh, cause, uh, like, what would that be? Almost like have they... They teeth in me, so they're, to say. The, their claws in me. Like, manipulation, manipulate, the puppet yeah, strings, yeah, the I'll, invisible strings I'm that they will that. say this so that you can do that. Uh-uh, and they'll, they'll do this so that they can make you respond uh-uh, in a different Jack. way. And they know that it's going to make you feel this way. Mm-hmm. They know that it's going to make you come to their rescue. Yeah. So for me, point number two is more about identifying yeah. those people okay. and say, okay, this person subtracts and this person divides mm-hmm. and this is how I deal with them. Mm-hmm. Now for some people, maybe I need to mark them and avoid them. The scripture yeah. says that I can do that for mm-hmm. some people who cause division, or maybe I just need to create healthy boundaries, or maybe I just need to love them here and just see them on Christmas or see them on Thanksgiving or something like that. Yeah. You know. But I want to know, I want to be in the know. Now these other people who add and multiply into my life. Those are investments in relationships. Mm. I want to make sure that I'm easy to lead. I'm easy to be a friend. I want to make sure that, you know, there's some intentionality towards that way that I want to go. But I don't know. Tell me if you see this. I feel like people naturally give a lot of their attention to the drama and maybe less attention to the people that can add value. Yeah. 
Do you see that at all? I, I see it. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> I, I think that's, I don't know. I've, I feel like everything that I'm saying is kind of leaning toward one side, which is, it well, sounds mean. No, go ahead. It sounds lean. mean, like yeah. cut people off. And, you know, and, and that's not what I'm trying to say. But at that's all. not your heart. That's not who you um, are as a person. Yeah. But it's very important. But I deal with <laughs> uh, in my own life. Right. Um, but then when I counsel people, I deal with so many people who are just stuck in life yep. because they're listening to really their mom, yep. their dad, and they their don't know sister, nothing. their brother, they got no fruit. their cousins, their their ex-boyfriend or nothing. their ex Like, yeah, and these people kind of have their claws on them. They yeah. have like the puppet strings. Right. And it's just like, well, well, what are you doing? What, uh, I... It, it, for for example, uh, there was uh, one person that I was just counseling um, on finances and on life decisions. I'm like, okay, well, why don't you do this with your finances? Well, they, their mother actually, the, the checks that, the paychecks that they got, uh -huh. their mother took their paychecks and then did stuff with them because she felt like, well, I have to, I owe this to my family. And I was like, are you <laughs> serious? You are grown and your what mother, what scripture like, do you get that from? Who, who would do that to yeah. someone? But anyway, mm -hmm. but there's, there's so many, uh, yeah. yeah. It, it, the, the water's so muddy when it comes to relationship with, relationships with our family, even. And I think in order for us to really, be who God's called us to be, yeah. to thrive, to be able to be blessed, to be a blessing. We have got to cut the strings. Mm -hmm. If it's not attached to God, cut the strings. Yeah. And that's not saying that there's not a time to take care of your family and the widows and those who are older. Not at all. Well, let's put that to the side for a second. We're basically talking about the toxic people mm -hmm. that are friends and that are family. That you can't do anything good for. Yeah. I mean, every you you do you give them gifts, clothes, <laughs> money, you say nice things to them, but they always want more. Yeah. And they're always thinking if you you uh -huh. They always have something negative to say about you. You cannot yeah. satisfy them. Yeah. Those are the people Ooh. you need to mark yeah. and separate yourself from. And you actually have permission to be free from that yeah. form of bondage. That is a yoke of bondage. And I think that you've had to learn that over the years because yeah. honestly, I know for me and you too, but I love hard. Yeah. And so I will give people the shirt off my back. Mm -hmm. I think over a span of nine years, we had over 19 people live with us. Mm -hmm. I will give you a job. I will try to help you get yourself together. I mean, you can go through all kinds of, well, I mean, we've had people yeah. um, who've, uh, uh, you know, overcoming drugs, doing drugs in our house, but we, we're still trying to help them overcome so forth and so on because we just love people yeah. and we see destiny in them. We can see things in them that they don't Come see in on. themselves. Um, and because I know that I love hard, I also need to protect me and my family and my soul just Absolutely. as hard. And I think that that's, um, it's okay to give ourselves permission to do that mm -hmm. because as a Christian, you almost feel this obligated, but you're not obligated to be anybody's doormat. You're not obligated to really just let people walk over you and leech from you and manipulate you and beat you down because then you can't be, um, you can't, you don't even have a supply for all of the other people that God wants you to reach. Right. And so the third thing that we've learned over our life is that bad company corrupts good manners. Mm, that's you know? good. And that's actually, that's straight the Bible, the B-I-B-L-E. Okay. Bad company corrupts good manners. Can you talk about that at all? Um, yeah, I think, you know, I can speak to my before Jesus days uh -huh. and, um, uh, you know, whether it were, I don't know, just friends in college and even in high school, you right. know, growing up in high school. Um, my first um, cigarette was with Bad Company. Right. My first drink was with Bad Company. Mm. Um, <laughs> and uh, a lot of things that I did was because I had Go ahead and bad tell them, company. Tell all of, go now, through the list. Girl. Now, these people, <laughs> I would say, I mean, and it's funny because like these people, I would say, were my friends. I still care for them to this day. Like, I mean, right. it's who I rolled with. But... Um, it was what I would call bad company because they influenced me to do things that were ungodly. Right. And um, I probably influenced them to do some things that were, you know, ungodly as well. I like to say it this way. Whenever God wants to um, do something in your life, he puts people in your life. Yeah. And whenever Satan wants to do something in your life, he puts people mm -hmm. in your life. And so the people who are coming into your life are probably there from Satan to lead you towards what is wrong or from God to lead you towards That's that so is right. That's so good. And I think it's so important for us to be discerning to determine who these people came from. Wow. And so, yeah, for me, it's the same. Now, I was the one probably influencing people wrong, I mean, to be honest with you. But um, the principle is this, is that bad company, like so who you hang out with mm -hmm. does matter, mm -hmm. you know. 
And so I've always thought it's interesting when people get set free from, like, say, a drug addiction. Uh And then they want to go back to the drug house and get everybody set free. But that's really not the environment right away for you to run Mm -hmm. back into Mm -hmm. because the environment suggests to you that you're supposed to be a part of it. And it will probably turn you out before you turn it out. I'm not saying that five years can't go by, 10 years can't go by, and God can't send you back into the prison and send you back into the drug house. Yeah, God can use you. But I think there needs to be a real season of maturity and separation because it's just like how Lot, he set his tent towards Sodom and and where did he end up? Mm -hmm. Because your environment is suggesting for you to come and be a part of it. So if you get free from a lifestyle, but you still hang out with everybody who's in that lifestyle, the environment is saying, no, you're supposed to be a part of it. Don't leave. And that's what happened to Lot. That's why he ended up back in Sodom. And listen, that is part of the reason why I do not drink alcohol to this day or hang around a lot of people who do drink alcohol because I don't want to put myself in that situation. The Bible says that the flesh left unchecked will always return back to where it came from. It is a way of me checking my flesh because the first 18 years of my life were so influential. Mm-hmm. It, ca- it, it kind of, you know, you're born in to um, sin shaped in iniquity. The first 18 years of my life were like that, that mm-hmm. suggested um, being an alcoholic, you need to drink like this, you need to do all of these things. Mm-hmm. I've been free from alcohol sober for what, 20, over 20 years now, mm-hmm. but you still won't see me hanging out at the bar, at the, at the sports club. You still won't see me. Even when we go to restaurants, we went to a restaurant the other day and we had the option to sit at the bar mm-hmm. because all the other seats were taken. And both of us looked at the bar. We saw the people hanging out with their drinks. We saw the drinks, you know, yeah. the bottles around. And we just looked and it was like, no, no, thank you. We'll yeah. wait for the drink. And I'm, we're not even saying that as haters. If you want to drink, drink. Yeah, you that's can drink you if you want to. But I'm saying my, that ain't the environment but I for know my spirit. For, not that's for me. Not, that's not the right. environment for my sober mindedness and the right. call of God on my life and the anointing on my right. life and the joy of the Lord that I walk in and how I want to live a life that is beyond reproach. It can be for somebody else, but it ain't Mm -hmm. for me. And I think that's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You need to know what environment you're supposed to be in and what relationships you need around you to be God, to be in God's best. And that's so good. So bad company corrupts good manners. And um, I guess what we're talking about today is like um, building some parameters Mm -hmm. and making investments in right relationships and like cutting off or, um, uh, putting boundaries around wrong relationships. And I, I, especially for those of you all who are newer to your faith, Mm -hmm. it's like when you're newer to the faith, the people that you used to hang out with and do life with will probably be the first to say negative things about you yeah. and call you a holy roller or you just... Well, they you say that you've, you've changed, changed but, like but a, you have changed. Yeah, thank God I changed. Yeah, changed. Like, thank God that I'm not that, stru- that mm. strip club, clubbing, drinking, lying, cheating, fornic- thank God I've changed. Yeah. So when people are like, man, it seems like you've changed, that shouldn't be a bad thing. Yeah, That actually should be like, thank God, mm-hmm. you see it? Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm, I'm letting people know that, listen, you can change, too, if you want to. Mm-hmm. Now, I can't make you change, but I'm not going to let you stop me from changing. Right. But that's what people want to do. Mm-hmm. And I, you know why people don't people um, persecute you and attack you for living godly? It's because the light that is in you is putting a spotlight on the darkness in them. Mm. And it makes them uncomfortable. And it makes them uncomfortable. The light in you now makes them uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So before you could go out and you could hang out and you could do whatever, and because both of you were in darkness, the darkness liked the darkness. Mm -hmm. But now that you're the light, the very fact that you're in the house, they're uncomfortable. The fact that you're in the car, they're uncomfortable. And they almost want to project like there's something wrong with you, and ain't nothing wrong with you. Everything is right with you. The problem is the darkness that's on the inside of them. Mm -hmm. And so you got. I remember when we first got really serious about God, and I had a family member, and I love this family member, but they put out a magazine, um, on the table, um, uh, and it was a negative n- magazine. It was a negative article about mega churches. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm talking about these are people who, man, were in church, yeah, loved me, people. and I love them, great people. But at the same time, you on the inside, I had to be like, get thee behind me, Satan. You know, it's not about that person. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a person that I love. I mean, I genuinely love. Right. Might not even have meant anything by it, but th- that right there was the plan of the enemy for me not to go full into my church because of some article about mega churches. Yeah. And so not only will it come from people that are not believers, many times the mm-hmm. persecution and the misunderstanding of relationships comes from other religious 
or zealous or legalistic Christians. People who think they're doing good they for you. They think they're doing good, but they're being used by the enemy. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to tell you why it doesn't take all of that. And you no know, tongues is this and tongues is that and money is this and money is that. And m what I learned over the years is that you will know a tree by its fruit. Mm -hmm. And a stranger's voice I will not follow. So I want to be very attentive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. And I also want to be a great fruit inspector. Yes. Because just because you say you love Jesus, you might not love Jesus like I love Jesus. Or you might not know him like I know exactly. him. And you might not be able to manifest in the kingdom what I'm able to manifest in the mm -hmm. kingdom. So I'm not going to let your words and limits limit me. And I, I think like... <laughs> you said the word compartmentalize before. I think you said that word when it comes to relationships and things. And I think what people do is they get someone, let's say they have someone who is a, a business mentor. Uh -huh. Man, they know business in and out and they are like, you can go to them for business. Yeah. I mean, they got books on business and all of this stuff, but their marriage sucks. Yeah. So, okay, it's okay mm -hmm. to go to them for business, but don't you dare, you better look at the fruit right. and don't listen to them when it comes to marriage advice. Right. And it is okay to do those things. There are people that I listen to on podcasts, mm -hmm. uh, maybe politics or just any health, you know, podcasts that I listen to, and they are an expert in health, yeah. you know, <laughs> but please don't go into the Bible. You <laughs> preached you politics about, right? and you are an expert in politics, but please don't, <laughs> don't try go, to pre don't preach don't the word. To, I mean, it is every homie. Christian. Yeah, yeah, you can preach the word. You're a Christian. <laughs> you have a believer, but don't try. Don't right. do that because oh, because I can't listen to you right. in that because right. you're not an expert in that, right. <laughs> but I can listen to you about this. I guess w one of the things that I want people to hear today is that it's okay to be misunderstood. Yeah. And just because people hate on you doesn't mm -hmm. mean that God does. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I've realized over the years that it's actually confirmation that when people speak ill of you, it's confirmation that you might be really walking with God. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I've been misunderstood so much that I've actually gotten used to it now and I actually welcome it. Wow. I'm talking about family members and friends, not naming names. And so, cause it's not about people to me. I'm just talking mm -hmm. about the principles that other people who are listening need to yeah. need to hear. Um, just misunderstanding of why I can't come to a wedding or why I, I didn't show up for uh, this birthday or why I wasn't able to come to this family reunion um, because my life is not my own. Yeah. And because maybe I don't have the budget for it, or maybe God has me doing another assignment or maybe he just didn't give me peace to go or I didn't want to come. But I just feel like there are so many people that have limits in their Christendom because they live for the audience of people more than the audience of God. Mm -hmm. And there's just something about divorcing yourself from the opinions of other people yes. so that you can be who God's called you to be. And I just speak a boldness over people today to be who God's called you to yes. be. You know, I know of um, one young lady who was Muslim and now she's, um, she's a follower of Jesus. She's a Christian. And, you know, she comes from a Palestinian family and um, they don't really understand her decisions. And she has to be bold. Yeah. She has to say, well, God has revealed himself to me. Mm -hmm. I have a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. I am healed and restored. I mean, she has a she got water baptized. She knows who Jesus yes. is. And she's going to have to deal with the fact that her family does not get it yet. Right. But she is the chosen one in that family for I everybody else, hopefully, to yet. get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Here's a few scriptures. Tell me what you get out of this. Matthew chapter 12. Verse 46, it says, while Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brother stood outside wanting to speak with him. Mm. And somebody told him, your mother and brother is standing outside wanting to speak with you. And he replied to them, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples. And he said, here are my mother and brother. Mm. For whoever does the will of the father in heaven is my brother and my sister and my mother. What sticks out to you from that? Now, I love this scripture <laughs> because there's another scripture in the Bible that's telling the same story in the gospel that says that his brother, his mother, his brothers were with his mother uh -huh. and they were going to Jesus to lay hands on him. Uh -huh. um, they were going to beat Jesus up. They were going to say, Jesus, what are you doing? Now, I have not read this scripture, but I'll take your word for it. Go take ahead. my word okay. for it. Okay. <laughs> they were going to lay hands on Jesus uh -huh. because they wanted to be like, you know, what are you doing? You know, that's family. And uh -huh. then Jesus says, well, who is my brother and my sister? But I think that's so important because if you're a part of a family uh -huh. that just persecutes you, uh -huh. you know, like just, you can't do anything right. right. I mean, Jesus knows right. all about your yeah. troubles. Yeah, he's basically, the, 
basically he's not trying to diss your natural family. Right. And that's not what today's episode is about. Right. But he is trying to highlight your spiritual family. Mm -hmm. And he says, who is my family, brother, sister, mother, yeah. other than those who do the will of God? Do the will of God. And I think God. so many times we don't look at our spiritual family as like really our family. Like mm -hmm. we got this thing like, well, blood is thicker than water. Well, the blood of Jesus is thicker than water. Mm -hmm. And that's what brings us together as spiritual family. Yeah. I think it's so important, spiritual family, like church family, like our closest friends and yeah. best friends. I mean, they are the people that's who we go to church with, the people who like we, we build the kingdom with, the people like that we, faith. we pray with people together, that yeah. we, we, we take care of kids and we teach the gospel to kids together. I mean, these are, these yeah. are our brothers and sisters, our mothers and fathers. Yeah. Uh, Matthew 10, 34 says, do not suppose that I've come to bring peace to the earth. I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. For I've come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be members of his own household. Mm. What sticks out to you in that one? Um, just the, the fact that we've, you know, we, we believe the word of God over all else, over what anyone else says. And, you know, you can have different... Um, uh, denominations. You can have people who believe in Jesus, but we disagree on baptism. Whose name are you baptized in? Or whether you speak in tongues or don't speak in tongues, yeah. or I don't know, and disagree on certain things. But really, blah, blah, blah. it's the word mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. You, you got to know the word of God for yourself mm -hmm. and you let the word, word of God rule and reign in your heart yeah. above anyone else. Yeah. For me, the scripture, um, you know, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. So when he says, I didn't come to bring peace, it gets my attention, mm. but a sword. And he says, dividing mother against daughter and a man's enemies will be that of his own household. It lets us know how powerful the gospel is, mm. that it's not like you get the chance to, well, I want to do this Christian thing a little bit, but as long as everybody in my family is okay with it, or as long as everybody thinks well of me. And it's like, no, he's come to cut all that, either you for him or against him. And um, I think that it's showing us the importance, once again, of spiritual family and that wow. some of the people that are closest to you can be used to the enemy the most to keep you out of the will of God. Um, Second Timothy 3.12, it says, yes, all who desire to live godly in Christ will suffer persecution. John 15 and 18 says, if the world hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you. Matthew 5 and 10, it says, blessed are those who persecu are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. And then he says, rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. I kind of put all those scriptures together. Yeah. Um, what jumps out to you? Anything? Uh, just that persecution is going to be there. Yeah. And let's not be surprised by it. Yeah, let's normalize on. it. Yeah. Like, yep, normalize I believe it, God and this is what I believe. Yeah. I believe the Bible and people are not going to be okay with it. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it is. Yep. And they are going to falsely say all evil against you mm. because of Jesus. Meaning falsely, meaning that, and I see that as a pastor, people just make up stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Some people online, they're hilarious to me. Like, it's actually funny to me now. Like, I was doing my fingers like this, and I was, like, counting one, two, and somebody said, well, that's the devil sign. The pastors know what they're doing. That's the devil. You, <laughs> like, like, no, these are two fingers. I the you devil. give way too I, much credit to the <laughs> devil. <laughs> Ain't nobody think about no <laughs> doggone demons or devils, man. These, I'm counting two fingers. These are my fingers. The devil ain't got nothing to do with it. Folk crazy. And I love it that it says that, yeah, that's pretty normal. Yeah. People are going to basically make up stuff mm -hmm. because you're holy. Mm -hmm. They're going to make up stuff because you're godly. Mm -hmm. They're going to make up stuff because God be with you. Wow. But if God be for you, then who can be against Come you? On. And he gives us the attitude. He says, basically, rejoice and be glad in it. And so I've kind of come to the place where like, man, thank God that I get to bear, yeah. you know, a couple of stripes for his name and it's confirmation to the authenticity of the anointing of the Lord. <laughs> Glory. Come on, we're soldiers <laughs> in the army of the Lord. All right. So here's some things we can do. What do you do with this relationship pain? Mm -hmm. I think we need to normalize it. Yeah. Everybody say normalize. Normalize. It. Um, it's not the end of the world. Expect it. Okay. So. Some you got a friend that is really close right now. That doesn't mm -hmm. mean they'll always be really close. Mm -hmm. I had friends that rolled with me 20 years ago that don't roll with me now. I had friends that rolled with me five years ago. They don't roll with me now. 
But God bless them, and yeah. God bless me. It's going to be okay. As long as husband and wife is together, as long as I'm taking care of my family and my kids, you know? Yes. And if God be for me, who can be against me? It's not what we want, but it's okay. You know, number two, I think we need to count it all joy. Like I said, man, you fall into persecution, people mm. talking bad about you, people at work don't understand you, you know? <laughs> to God be the glory. I'm not getting crucified. I'm not getting um, boiled in tar. I'm not getting hung upside down. Y'all just talking about me? Talk on. Number three, send their words of rejection back to hell where they came from, all right? And place it, replace it with words that you speak over your life. Yeah. And this is big for people who've been through a divorce or you've been in a relationship where it's like as that person was exiting the relationship, they use their tongue to give you a, a whipping. Mm, and a you ain't nothing, and you a mistake, and you, you nobody's ever going to marry you again, and you got to send those words back to hell where they came from. So I, I capture those thoughts and those words. I put them underneath my feet. No, I'm an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ Jesus. I'm the head and not yes. the tail, above only, never beneath, the lender, not the borrower. And you got to speak what God says about you, and it doesn't matter what people say about you, mm -hmm. you know? And so, number four, you got to ask God for his peace to guard your heart and guard your mind. I think that's huge, okay? So when it comes to relationship pain, um, because we love hard, and I know that our audience, they love Jesus, and they love hard. Yeah. And because we love hard, I can feel hard, and I can be hurt, mm -hmm. okay? Now, by faith, I'll say, well, you can't hurt me. But truthfully, because I'm a person of compassion, I feel. I feel the rejection. I feel the betrayal. I feel the abandonment. I feel it many times before it even comes. But I, my faith is more in God's peace that passes my understanding that will guard my heart and mind in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. So even though relationship pain is a normalized, expected thing that I will count it all joy in, I, by faith, receive the shalom of God to protect my heart. Because the last thing mm -hmm. we can do is get bitter. Right. Because whenever you get bitter, you're going to lose your anointing. You know, it, the, the well starts to dry up because now you can't love any longer because you want to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what relationship pain does. And that's why this podcast is so important, because we need to help people navigate the pain. Mm -hmm. So it's coming. His grace is sufficient. The peace of God is going to be there. It's going to be OK. Yeah. But you can't get stuck. Yeah. And, and you're not the only one. Mm -hmm. People all over the world experience pain. Yeah. They experience betrayal. Um, they experience um, backstabbing. And um, but you can do it. You can do you it. You can you can experience it. Uh -huh. You can go through it and yeah. not be stuck in it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You can. Jesus says that my peace I give you. Yeah. And so we have the peace of Jesus. And I just heard recently that peace is a person. Peace is Jesus. Yeah. And he lives in us and we have him. And so if we can just focus on the peace, yes, this doesn't feel good right now. But also, yes, I have peace, the Come peace on. that transcends all understanding. So good. And I'll give you the last one. Number five would be make intentional investments into the right relationships. Mm -hmm. And I need somebody to hear this because many times um, people's rejection is God's protection. Mm. Let me say it again. People's rejection, man's rejection sometimes is God's protection. Wow. And over the course of my life, as I've walked through ministry, I've seen this person reject me, this person betray me, this person reject me, this person betray me, this person reject me. And at first I was hurt, but now I realize that people's rejection is actually God's protection. Mm. And God is actually protecting me for my calling and my purpose. He's protecting me not to invest in wrong relationships when he have other people that will run with the words that value my voice and value my anointing. And so now people's rejection, I don't take it as rejection. It's actually God's protection. Wow. And I think it goes into counting it all joy because that's when it's the right perspective. Well, if that door closed, God, I know you have another one for me. Come if on. you don't fix this situation, God, I know there's something better coming on the way. Mm -hmm. It's all about counting it all joy because God ultimately is going to bring you out on top. Can you pray for people right now that's just going through people approval? Can mm -hmm. you just pray um, that that spirit of people approval be broken and that they just walk in another level of um, boldness? Absolutely. Father, I pray first of all that you heal the hearts of everyone listening that who has um, been hurt by people, by loved ones, who has been persecuted. People said wrong things about them. People lied about them. Father, I pray that you would just begin to heal them right now in Jesus' name. And now I pray that you give them a boldness and a confidence to say no to who they need to say no to, yes to who they need to say yes to, yes. an ability to put God first, um, to allow your word to be a sword 
in their life, to allow you, Father, to protect them in relationships, that they will not be fearful, um, they will not be untrustworthy, that they won't conceal their love and, and be afraid to love again, Father, but they will open up their hearts and love because you are with them and that the Prince of Peace that transcends all understanding is always with them. And so, Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for that. Hey, guys, well, we're out of time for today. I hope that you enjoyed today's episode on relationship pain. And we pray that the pain that is in your heart from any relationship that our God is able to mend and to heal and to restore the brokenhearted. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure that you subscribe right now. You want to get the download. If you get podcast, if you're on YouTube, we want you to be the first to get the content as it is released. We release a new episode every Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Eastern Standard Time, United States of America. Um, if you find value in our content, we would love to hear from you. There's an email address in the show notes. Also, you can like, share, comment. We believe that sharing is caring and caring is sharing. And make sure you tune in with us, mm-hmm. of course, on next week as we bring you another episode from right here at Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha. We love you guys, and we'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.